Greetings, kaiju fans. I'm Cooper, and the focus of today's kaiju profile is on Gezora. The mutant cuttlefish Gezora debuted alongside Ganymus and Carmibus in the 1970 film Space Amoeba, and like its co-stars, he is a pawn of the alien Yogg. Although never featured in a Godzilla film aside from stock footage in the beginning of Godzilla Final Wars, the tentacled monster became the most popular of the Space Amoeba trio, subsequently appearing in a variety of Toho licensed Godzilla media, ranging from official fantasy matchup artwork in books to video games, two of which didn't even feature Ganymus or Kamebus, to American comics, and even the novel Godzilla Monster Apocalypse, where he emerged from the Mediterranean Sea in the later 2010s and hindered refugee movement out of Europe. Zora's design was based after real-life cephalopods, and, according to assistant director Teriyoshi Nakano, the principle that by making things people know huge, they'd be scary. Veteran Toho modelers Teizo Toshimitsu and Yasuo Yagi were in charge of the modelling of Gizora. Gizora's eyeballs were originally intended to move, but the mechanism broke during filming and was never repaired. Producer Fumio Tanaka later commented on this and went on to link the oversight to the passing of special effects director Eiji Tsuburaya, saying, Mr. Tsuburaya had more influence within Toho than Teisho Arakawa did, so the members of the special effects staff were given less time in which to do their work after Mr. Tsuburaya died. This made them work a little less carefully than they previously had. Additionally, for scenes such as the one where Gazora's tentacles burst into the house that Yokoyama and Riko were in, at least two full-size tentacle props were constructed and operated by piano wires. A kisslip cuttlefish mutated by the ever-transient space amoeba Yogg off the coast of Sergio Island, Gizora was regarded as a mythical beast by the island's natives. Emerging from the waters, the monster attacked a pair of men attempting to fish and took his first victim in the form of a man named Sakura. Although the other, an engineer by the name of Yokoyama, would escape with his life, he was left traumatically scarred by the incident. Yokoyama would later agree to join a small group of Japanese visitors to the island in surveying a cave connected to the ocean's waters, only to be startled by the appearance of Gizora's trademark bioluminescent glow, and flee the scene with an islander named Riko. Gizora emerged from the ocean and decimated the camp which Yokoyama had fled to, killing him, and attempted to do the same to Riko, but was fortunately repelled by the ultrasonic waves emitted from a nearby colony of native bats, leaving the man in a near unresponsive state and with a number of frostbitten wounds. Gizora was later discovered by Taro Kudo and Dr. Kiyoichi Mida dwelling on the seafloor, entrapping both in his tentacles but letting the men go after being distracted by a family of dolphins swimming nearby. Gizora then emerged from the ocean once more and attacked another native outpost. After some conspiring, Gizora was killed by drenching a field in gasoline and luring the monster to him with gunshots before setting him ablaze with torches, exploiting his aversion for fire and other high temperature substances. Gizora retreated to the ocean floor where he finally died from his wounds. However, Yogg escaped his host and sought out new creatures to mutate. Tentacles. Gizora possesses ten long, suction cup-laden tentacles, which are effective for pinning and constricting. Within the film, Gizora uses his tentacles to strike objects from a distance and knock them over, or to toss and drown people. Ink Gizora possesses a tube that allows him to secrete large amounts of ink underwater. This attack is described as follows. A large quantity of ink is spat from an ink tube to create a world of darkness. Much like real-world cephalopods, this ability is used to hamper visibility, demonstrated as Taro Kudo and Dr. Kiyoichi Mida attempt to flee from the monster after diving to search for the crashed Helios 7. Freezing temperature. Due to his low body temperature, Gizora is able to cool the water and air around him to freezing temperatures and is even said to be able to instantaneously freeze opponents. Although Gizora does not come into contact with any other kaiju in his sole film appearance, the latter ability is still partially displayed when he leaves the Sergio Islander Rico with a number of frostbitten wounds. When underwater, Gizora emits bands of bright blue light, which ultimately came to be recognised as a sign of the monster's presence. This may be in part due to the space amoeba Yogg possessing Gizora's body, who himself is an amorphous bright blue creature. In a similar manner, when on land, Gizora's eyes continuously blink a yellow light, and his body also seems to periodically glow a dim blue, such as when he is being shot at by Taro and Dr. Mida. Gizora was shown to have a moderate resistance to some conventional human weaponry, shrugging off a number of rifle shots and having his skin unable to be punctured by a knife or harpoon. 
Weaknesses. Gizora is weakened by high temperatures as a result of his low body temperature, and he is also weakened by ultrasonic waves, demonstrated when he is deterred by the ultrasonic waves emitted from a colony of native bats. Not unlike Cumibus and Ganymus. Gizora, along with Ganymus, were the last non-Godzilla monsters played by suit actor Haruo Nakajima, who played the original Godzilla throughout most of the Showa series along with other Toho monsters. Gizora's name comes from the Japanese word gesol, referring to squid legs. The ra at the end is an extremely common suffix for kaiju names. Originally, however, the squid monster's name was Zogera. Despite not appearing in a Godzilla film, not counting the stock footage used in Godzilla Final Wars, Gizora has had a prominent role in Godzilla media outside of the films. Perhaps the most noteworthy appearance of Gizora in a video game is in the NES game Godzilla Monster of Monsters, in which he and Mogura are the first two monsters to be fought by the player. Gizora's AI in the game has a glitch which allows him to trap the player's monster and repeatedly hit them until the battle timer runs out and returns the player to the board. Gizora also appeared in Godzilla Rulers of Earth. His origins here are never directly stated, however he is implied to be an ancient creature belonging to the Earth's natural order, as he is depicted on a mural located on Infant Island, aligning him with the element of water. While under the control of the Devonian aliens, he attacked the survivors of the USS Goldstein after the ship had been sunk by Manda. In issue 9, he assaulted a naval fleet alongside Manda and Titanosaurus, assembled near where Godzilla fought Myalante. The Monster King soon drove the three monsters off. Later on, Desta Roya joined the three monsters to defend the Devonian capital against Godzilla, but they were defeated. Although Gizora presumably survived, as a trilopod which had absorbed his DNA appeared in Los Angeles four years later, he was never seen afterward, nor did he take part in the final battle between the Earth monsters and the trilopods. And that's all for Gizora. Thank you for watching.